Welcome to Color Me Green, a podcast focused on making the world a greener place. So it's summertime and everyone is usually off taking their family vacations and traveling. I've been hearing a lot of people saying that they're going on cruises or even that their family takes annual cruise trips. Now, I don't know about you, but after seeing the Titanic and Poseidon, um, I'm good, but thanks. Sure, they may be different now or whatever, but still not happening over here. Not only do I have a fear of the ocean and the things in it and obviously the things that somehow float on top of it, but I also don't like what those huge cruise ships do to the ocean. And that's exactly what we're going to talk about in today's episode. So if you're planning on going on a cruise soon, hopefully this will change your mind or at least get you thinking a little bit. The focus on cruise ships and their environmental impact have become a subject of concern in recent years. Cruise ships carry thousands of passengers and crew across the oceans every day. Their popularity as a vacation option has led to a significant increase in their numbers and size, only increasing their ecological footprint. Several key factors contribute to their impact, including air and water pollution, greenhouse gas emissions, and waste generation. The massive engines that power these ships release substantial amounts of sulfur dioxide, nitrogen oxides, and other matter. Additionally, the discharge of untreated wastewater, ballast water, and solid waste can have severe consequences for marine ecosystems and coastal environments. Definition break. Ballast water is fresh water or salt water that is held in the ballast tanks or cargo holds of a ship. It is used to provide stability or maneuverability during travel when ships are not carrying cargo, not carrying enough cargo, or when more stability is required due to rough waters. As awareness grows about the fragile state of the world's oceans and the urgency to combat climate change, the scrutiny on cruise ships and their environmental practices continues to grow, promoting the industry to seek innovative solutions and sustainable practices to reduce their footprint and preserve the delicate marine ecosystems they travel through. We already discussed sustainable tourism or ecotourism back in the way beginning of Color Me Green on episode 9, but I just want to clarify the importance of it. Discussing sustainable practices in the tourism industry is very important not only for us currently, but also for future generations to be able to see the world. Tourism, while contributing significantly to global economies, also puts a ton of pressure on the environment and local communities. Implementing sustainable practices not only helps preserve fragile ecosystems and biodiversity, but also enhances the overall quality of travel experiences. It's a collective responsibility that lets destinations flourish while respecting the balance between people, nature, and culture. The cruise ship industry has a rapid evolution originating from the early 19th century. The roots of modern day cruises can be traced back to the mid 1800s when steamships began transporting passengers for leisure along with cargo. It wasn't until the late 19th century that the concept of luxury cruises came to be. The Peninsular, the Oriental Steam Navigation Company, P&O, is credited with launching the first cruise for pure leisure in 1844. Over the next century, technological advancements such as the introduction of diesel engines and air conditioning revolutionized the comfort and capacity of cruise ships, making them more appealing to a broader range of travelers. The industry really took off in the later half of the 20th century and on into the 21st century. In the 1960s, there was a rise of purpose-built cruise ships designed exclusively for leisure, making a significant shift away from converted ocean liners. Eventually, companies began designing ships equipped with a variety of amenities from fine dining and entertainment to pools and casinos. Despite facing challenges such as economic downturns and occasional safety concerns, as well as COVID shutting down everything, the cruise industry only continues to grow. There are currently over 300 cruise ships operating worldwide. Each one of these carrying around 3,000 passengers for an average of seven days for run cruise duration. Cruise ships are often referred to as floating cities, and oddly enough, they are just about as polluting as small cities. Standing on the deck of a cruise ship is similar to being in one of the world's most polluted cities. Not only can the emissions produced contribute to serious health issues, but cruises have also been known for discarding trash, fuel, and sewage directly into the ocean. 
Conventional cruise ships are powered by diesel, which is one of the most CO2 producing fuel types available. Sailors for the Sea, an ocean conservation nonprofit affiliated with Oceana, reports that marine diesel generates approximately 21 pounds of CO2 per gallon of fuel. Cruise ships also release black carbon, a type of soot produced from burning fossil fuels and biomass. Black carbon's impact on global warming is believed to be up to 15 times stronger than that of CO2. They emit nearly six times more black carbon than an oil tanker, which is a ship designed for bulk transport of oil or products. A single cruise ship emits smokestack and exhaust fumes equivalent to what 12,000 cars produce daily, which is insane. Despite contributing for only 1% of the global fleet of ships, cruise ships contribute to 6% of marine black carbon emissions. Similarly to how planes increase their emissions by releasing greenhouse gases at high altitudes, emissions from ships are particularly detrimental because the CO2 they release is rapidly absorbed by seawater. This process can lead to a change in the ocean's pH, known as ocean acidification. According to Oceana, a nonprofit ocean conservation organization, 255,000 gallons of gray water, water from laundries, showers, sinks, and dishwashers are poured into the ocean every day by mid-sized cruise ships. On a daily basis, a typical cruise ship generates approximately 15 gallons of hazardous chemicals sourced from various onboard facilities such as dry cleaning, photo processing, painting, and many other activities. When the ship empties its bilge tanks, about 7,000 gallons of oily bilge water are released into the oceans. During each cruise, these ships take in ballast water equivalent to the volume of 33 tanker trucks, containing aquatic plants and animals from distant ports, and release it into U.S. harbors and bays. Unfortunately, the ballast water often introduces non-native species that can displace and harm local species, while also potentially carrying diseases like chloria and paralytic shellfish poisoning into harbors. Another problem that we are all too well aware of is plastic waste, which brings up the question, what do cruise ships do with plastic waste? Plastic is a real problem both on land and in marine environments. By 2050, it's estimated that there will be more plastic in our oceans than fish if we continue to let the oil and gas industry produce more plastics. And as we've discussed here many times, when plastic enters the ocean's ecosystem, they don't disappear. They just break down into smaller and smaller pieces, microplastics. Marine wildlife mistakenly ingest these fragments, leading to entanglement, choking, and death due to their stomachs becoming filled with plastic. Though cruise lines are prohibited by law from disposing of plastic waste into the oceans, some of them have been found guilty of doing so. For instance, in 2019, Carnival Corporation and its subsidiary Princess Cruise Lines faced a $20 million fine, a portion of which was related to illegally dumping plastic directly into the ocean. Two years earlier, Princess Cruise Lines had to pay $40 million, in criminal fines for disposing of plastic straws, food waste, and aluminum into the ocean. These fines may appear substantial, but for these massive corporations with billions of dollars in annual revenue, they are insignificant and can be regarded as merely a minor punishment. In my personal opinion, a hefty fine is nothing compared to the mass amounts of irreversible damage that they continue to cause to our environment and the ocean's ecosystem. I just have to say this because it's been bothering me. The ocean is not a place that you can just throw your trash into and think it's gone. It's not just out of sight, out of mind. It has an actual impact. The act of littering, whether on land or in the ocean, has a negative impact. Like I've mentioned in my rant on littering many times, there is no positive impact when it comes to littering. If you wouldn't throw it on the floor of your own house, don't throw it on the ground or in the water. Nothing good comes of it, so just don't do it. Anyway, 
Unfortunately, cruise ships are exempt from significant environmental protection standards applicable to cities and industries that generate a comparable amount of waste. While industries and cities must adhere to the Clean Water Act, which mandates permits for treating and discharging wastes with monitoring, testing, and reporting requirements, cruise ships lack such obligations. Therefore, they can freely dispose of untreated sewage into the oceans without the need for permits or disclosing information about their releases. This lack of transparency makes it challenging for both the government and the public to measure the extent of pollution caused by ships. The ecosystems affected by water pollution from cruise ships have no control over the situation. Marine wildlife is greatly impacted by this waste, negatively impacting their food sources, migration patterns, and overall health. Communities suffer from loss of vital coral reefs and the contamination of fishing grounds, turning once clean water into a toxic mix of carcinogens with no escape. These ships rely on anchors to stay in place, causing irreparable damage to these already struggling ocean ecosystems and their inhabitants. In many areas where coral thrives, the cruise industry destroys it to construct docks and channels for port access. Coral reefs provide shelter to a quarter of marine species worldwide. So when reefs are harmed, a significant portion of marine life is affected as well. For example, an incident occurred back in 2015 off the coast of Grand Cayman, where a cruise ship owned by Royal Caribbean Cruises lowered its anchor near a protected coral reef. Within minutes, the centuries-old reef was completely destroyed. This was captured on video by two scuba divers who witnessed the event. Despite this evidence, there was no action taken. The cruise line had surprisingly been granted permission by the Department of Environment in Grand Cayman to drop the anchor there, even though it was a protected coral reef, an area even off limits to divers, fishing, and lobster hunting, but the cruise industry was granted approval to damage it, despite existing laws in place to protect coral reefs. The effect of cruise ships doesn't just stop at the ocean or the environment. It also impacts local port communities and tourist destinations. On one hand, it has stimulated economic growth by creating employment opportunities and boosting businesses dependent on tourism. Local shops, restaurants, and service providers benefit from the influx of cruise passengers, generating much-needed revenue for the region. However, the surge of cruise tourism has also presented challenges for local communities. Large number of tourists arriving simultaneously constrain resources and increase environmental pressures, leading to issues like waste management and pollution. The influx of visitors can also result in cultural change and a loss of authentic local identity, as tourist-centric activities might overshadow traditional practices. Balancing the benefits of cruise tourism while mitigating its adverse effects requires careful planning and sustainable strategies to ensure a positive and lasting impact on local communities. If you're new here, like everything we discuss on the show, I like to discuss the pros and cons of most topics. Except littering, because there's only cons. So with that being said, we are going to move into the ways cruise lines are trying to improve and find more sustainable alternatives. Over the past decade, the cruise industry has witnessed remarkable advancements in technology and an increased focus on sustainable practices, particularly in fuel alternatives. Cruise ship companies have been investing heavily in cutting-edge technologies to enhance passenger comfort, safety, and environmental sustainability. One significant breakthrough has been the integration of advanced propulsion systems that reduce emissions and fuel consumption, such as LNG, liquefied natural gas, engines, and fuel cells. These alternatives have substantially decreased greenhouse gas emissions and improved air quality around popular cruise destinations. Innovative hull designs and advanced stabilizing systems have also increased fuel efficiency and minimized the ship's environmental impact. Onboard energy management systems now optimize power usage, employing renewable energy sources like solar panels and wind turbines, reducing dependency on traditional fossil fuels during cruise operations. Along with lowered emissions, implementing waste management and recycling practices on board ships is crucial for sustainable and responsible travel. 
with millions of passengers and crew members generating a substantial amount of waste during each voyage cruise lines must adopt efficient and environmentally conscious strategies to minimize their ecological impact ships should be equipped with state-of-the-art waste sorting facilities to separate recyclables organic waste and non-recyclable materials Comprehensive training programs for crew members promote awareness and adherence to waste management protocols. Partnering with recycling facilities at various ports allow for the proper disposal and recycling of collected materials. Utilizing advanced waste to energy technologies can help reduce the volume of waste while producing clean energy. By embracing these practices, the cruise industry can play a vital role in preserving the marine environment and contributing to a greener future for global travel. Next time you decide to go on a cruise, or any trip for that matter, please be conscious of the impact of the companies you are giving your money to, and be mindful of the impact that your choice of transportation has on the environment. I want to thank you for listening to today's episode of Color Me Green. New episodes come out on Wednesdays, and hopefully each one has something you can take away and learn from. If you want to request a certain topic to discuss, please feel free to message me on the show's Instagram at Color Me Green Podcast, linked in the show notes. If you loved today's episode, please make sure to leave a review and let others know what you think of the show. One of the best ways to help change the world is to share this episode with a friend and let them also learn what they can do to live more sustainably. Always remember to reduce, reuse, recycle, and live green.